Hi everybody and welcome to the Tinkerverse. So today I've got my oldest son Ryan with me and uh, as I've been teaching him Lightburn, uh, today we're going to look at a little bit of composition primarily using the Cut Shapes tool and a fair bit of note editing to do a little bit of cleanup. So stick around and let's go on this journey together. So what cup shapes does um, is if I've got a given shape here and I want to create a tool and I'm going to use this tool to cut out part of this shape and give me two separate shapes. So if I select the shape I want to cut and then I select the tool, think of a cookie cutter. I'm pushing that down through the shape. And so when I do this, what I end up with is two independent shapes. So I've got the shape as a whole with the piece cut out and then I've got the piece that was overlapping uh, with the cutter. So we're going to take that um, and we're going to apply that to a, uh, a, a, an image for my, um, my Florida sport fishing um, where I've got a fish overlaying the state of Florida. Um, but a couple of things to take away if you note when I did that cut shapes if I undo this, you'll see that the tool shape actually gets taken away. So, um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna need to cut multiple times using a similar shape or the same shape, you'll want to duplicate that because each time you use that tool, the tool gets uh, the the rest of the tool gets removed. So, cut shapes. You see the rest of the tool is gone. So I'm going to attempt to replicate that image. Um, so I'm actually using this today to teach my oldest son um, how to use this tool and so along the way if he's got questions um, there may be a little conversational back and forth that really can only help the video. Uh, but I'm looking to recreate this and what's unique about this is I've got one shape that overlaps one and then wraps under the other so it actually does a full wrap around which means I have to cut out um, a good chunk of Florida where his head overlaps and then I've got to cut out the piece of the sailfish where it goes under the, under the, the state. So first thing I'm going to do is control I and I'm going to bring in my two images. And so that gave me my baseline state image and it gave me my sailfish. Uh, so a couple things I want to do first, um, your tool that you use to cut needs to not be part of a larger group. It needs to be on its own. So if you look, I've got this outline here around the state of Florida. And if I click that, it's actually part of the larger group. So first thing I need to do is I need to ungroup this. So I can either hit control U to ungroup or I can go up here and click on the little single. You've got the, the group and then the ungroup. So if I ungroup that, just to see, okay, it's separate. And then what I'm going to do is that's on a tool layer. So I'm going to actually turn off that tool layer so that I can come back through and regroup the state. Um, and I want the state to be grouped so that when I do my cuts, it applies to all of the underlying. So just as an example, if I ungroup this, you'll see that it's, it's a bunch of layers together, right? Um, so I want to keep all that grouped so that when I do my cut actions, so control G to group it, um, that everything gets cut together. Alright, so next thing I want to do is I'm going to take my sailfish here and I'm going to flip them around and then figure out placement and I think I want to put him so that he wraps around just so that we've got Tampa here. Yeah, right about there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so his upper body is going to lay over the state and then his tail is going to go behind the state. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to take this and I want to create an outline with a one millimeter offset because that's the spacing I want. And you'll see it kind of negative, it put everything into a negative, but what I'm going to do is come in here, <clears throat> take this outer, very outer line here and move that to a tool layer. And so now I've got the outline and I've got the fish itself. 
Uh, so now if I turn off everything but my tool layers, what you'll see is there's the fish, and actually I'm going to put him on his own tool layer. Okay, so I can turn that one off. Um, again, my cutting tool can only be a, a single shape. It can't be a group. So I need to ungroup this, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete all this interior stuff because it's not relevant. So all I've got is the outline. So that's my cutting tool. Good so far? Mm -hmm. Now if you wanted to make a, uh, a see-through fish, would it still be the same process or would you have to keep some of that interior? Um, so you would you could keep some of the interior and do them as separate cuts. Okay. Um, and that absolutely you can do, but you have to pay attention to the order that you cut things. Um, and it's going to be you could do a similar version to what you're going to see us do here in a minute, which is like the top and bottom are going to be two different operations. So you could, in theory, do that same thing um, with, let me put those back just for reference. Um, you could do that with these. And so you could see the state, let's say, through this middle piece, and then it's blocked out by the outside. You would just treat them as separate tools and just make sure that they stay ungrouped. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So in this case, though, I do want those gone. Um, and then we'll bring back all of that. And I'm doing um, Control-Alt-W to kind of toggle my fill. Um, I could do the same thing by coming in here and changing it to line, for example. But I want to be able to kind of see what's going on. Um, just kind of a proof to see, yeah, it's doing what I want. But then sometimes it's easier to work in that line mode. Um, all right. so. What I want to do next is I want to take that outline, and because I'm going to use this more than once, I'm actually going to duplicate this. So I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it, and then I'm going to move the duplicated one to its own layer. So now I've got a layer of just that cut tool. And then I'm going to take the state of Florida, and then I'm going to take that cut tool. So I'm holding Shift to select them both. So I, I select the shape I want to cut and then I hold shift and select my cutting tool. Let's actually turn off the fish so we can get a better view of that. Okay, so let's try this again. We're going to take the state of Florida. We're going to cut the sailfish out of it. Cut shapes. Okay, and that's okay that it filled that in. We're going to go back and we're going to fix that with some node editing. Um, but first thing I want to do is bring the fish back and look at what I've got here. So now my cut shape, you'll see that it's my top and my bottom. So I actually want to ungroup that. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to ungroup all that so that I have, it looks like I need to do that a couple times. So ungroup. Okay. Um, so now I've got just the upper and then the lower, which I want to leave alone. So I'm going to delete the upper piece and I'm going to delete the lines that I don't want and delete that. Okay, so that cleaned out the inside of the head of the sailfish, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so now before I do anything else, we'll do all our node editing together at the end. So what I want to do is I want to take the sailfish now and I'm going to cut, do the reverse of that is I'm going to cut the state of Florida from the sailfish. So the state of Florida should have its own tool layer and we're going to duplicate that just like we did before and move that to an upper layer so I can turn off all the rest of the noise. Okay. And yep. So what I want to do here is I want to take um, let's turn off that. So I want to take the sailfish and I'm going to take the state of Florida as the cut tool. Okay, and so notice it's grayed out. It's because something's still grouped. So it's going to be my cut tool is still grouped. So let me ungroup that. All right, so I'm going to take my sailfish and my state of Florida. And now I can do a cut shape. Okay, so now in theory, I've got this whole center section here, and I'm going to move that to a separate layer. Um, so you can kind of see where my layer breaks are just by the different colors. I use the coloring so that it kind of highlights to me what's going on. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to take and ungroup these and then I want to delete out my individual pieces that 
I don't want. Okay. So that gives me the tail behind. That was the easier one. I can take this, move it back to my other layer. Um, actually, if I hold shift and hold, if I hold shift and touch the and touch the layer, it selects everything on that layer. So I can move all that back. In theory, are they grouped? When you um, ungroup them, did you regroup them? That's what I'm going to do now. Gotcha. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, so it's that one that I want. And move those back. And so now I've got everything on that layer, and I'm going to regroup that. So Control G. Okay. So now my sailfish is kind of put is kind of put back together. Um, so I broke them apart so I could take out the tail. And so by separating them, you can see you can see what we've got going on so far. Um, okay, so now I've got his head over the state and his tail under the state, which is what we want. So now we needed to go back and do some cleanup on um, the fill that was the. Um, so let me turn all that off, and we're going to do some cleanup here. So uh, let me ungroup all this. Group. Now I'm gonna get rid of these just because they're kind of they're too small to be relevant, right? And in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really affect the look. They were just kind of hanging off on their own out there. Mm -hmm. So I got rid of those just to clean it up. Um, and now because when I did the cut, it closed off my boundaries, I need to expose this back out so that it um, reintroduces uh, that piece to what is essentially transparent. Um, if you see here, you can see the grid behind it. So I want those to be the, the white section, so to speak, the unengraved section to be transparent here. So what I need to do is I need to break this line back out. Uh, so if I do a little node editing here, and I'm going to insert so I to insert a node and I'm going to put it right at that intersection and then delete these out and so that gives me that exposed but if you see it doesn't change it yet or it's not right yet until I come in here and I'm going to do alt J to join that as all one piece and so that fixes that upper one Okay, editor me breaking in here for a minute. Um, so I know I'm going to get the question, why didn't you use Boolean operators instead of node editing? Uh, I had done several iterations of this design before I recorded this video, and through each one of them, I did try some form of node editing. Unfortunately, with the way that um, the results that I was getting from cut shapes and the design overall... Uh, did not lend itself to Boolean operators. Um, you know, whether it was the fact that shapes were overlapping each other um, or not overlapping each other or, you know, little disconnects here and there. Um, end result was the Boolean operators didn't do exactly what I wanted them to do. Um, I did try the various subtracts and unions and welds and all that stuff. And ultimately, this was, for me, a job for node editing based on the design. Uh, there will be other designs where you can do Booleans, um, absolutely. But in this case, uh, node editing was the right, was the right choice. Um, I'm going to fast forward through some of the node editing here uh, in this video. But if you are unfamiliar with it or need a deep dive into node editing, uh, check out my other video, which I will post up in the corner over here and uh, go take a look at um, node editing in detail um, uh, you know when you're done with this video and uh, hopefully that helps you out so for now back to the video so now we need to do the same down here we need to figure out what was closed off that shouldn't have been um, so I can see that these two stretches here and here shouldn't be there so I'm gonna again node edit this put an eye at each of those intersections and then delete out the junk. And because there's a couple layers going on, you'll notice that like I'll delete something and then it's still there. It's because it was there from the other layer as well. So I'm having to kind of delete it like that 
-hmm. it deleted it from one layer now I got to select the other layer and delete it from there gotcha. so so all of this was introduced by the tail yeah because I because of the way I cut it um, the tail split all this stuff so now I'm I don't want this split I'm having to rejoin it back together so my fill layer fills the way it's supposed to so okay so blue white blue white blue white Okay, so that's going to look weird, I think. Yeah. All right, so we've got a bunch of unclosed shapes now. So let's see if we can... Let's see how smart this is. If I want to come in here and try to join, auto-join, it only caught a couple. Okay. So edit, select open shapes. Yeah, we've got a lot of open shapes here, so we need to figure out where the breaks are. So I'm just going to follow the dotted line until I see it change to a solid. All right, so that one's good. That one looks good. So what? Okay, maybe if I just close them individually. All right, something's off here. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Close path. There. Hmm. That's what I want. So it's just a matter of finding the things that were cut and kind of joining them back together. I know that was a little tedious, but that honestly was pretty much the end. Um, so if I turn that back on, leave my tool layers off, I can... What is that? Oh, that was... What is that? A oh. little leftover artifact. Okay, so there's the fish. There's the state. Um, I can actually take the fish now and move him down to the same layer. And in theory, let's make sure we don't have any open shapes, which we still do. So what's open? Okay, that's open. So let's close that. We have to make sure that they're all closed. Um, Otherwise, when I go to do this, it's going to tell me that there's open shapes. If I click Show Me, it's going to highlight what's open. Uh, so I can take that, close path, and there you go. That's it. Cool. So it was kind of a longer process than I anticipated, just because of the way that the because of the way the fish fell on the various fills, because I've got kind of these overlapping fills, um, it didn't quite know how to break it, or actually it did exactly what I told it to do. Um, so in reality, it, it did the literal translation of what I told it. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it because it broke those shapes apart, I just had to rejoin them together and clean up the nodes so that it knew what was closed and what was supposed to be filled versus left unfilled. So, um, so there you go. 